A Christian leader calling for a major change on Grand Bahama. Schools in the West a major concern. And a young entrepreneur hoping to inspire others. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. The government's moving closer to securing a new heads of agreement for the controversial Oban Energy Steel airmarked for East Grand Bahama. Minister of Labor, the Honorable Dion Folks, who co-chairs the Cabinet Subcommittee and Technical Advisory Group, says that the agreement will be more pleasing to the Bahamian people and residents of East End in particular, as it will set out better environmental terms and protections. According to Folks, some of the restrictive legal positions in the current agreement will be revised. Once the Technical Advisory Committee submits its report to the government, negotiations for the new heads of agreements will begin. Folks says once a new agreement is in place, the Oban project can move forward. In March, Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis admitted that his government made a series of missteps regarding its deal with Oban Energies in its haste to jumpstart the Grand Bahama economy. Despite the controversy surrounding the multi-billion dollar project, Folks believes that once the government is satisfied that the development can proceed, it will be good news for Grand Bahama. Oban has, has um, done a lot of legwork with respect to setting up an office in Freeport. And, and also they are also prepared, I am advised by their principals, to move quickly to, to, to begin the project and to begin to employ um, grand, grand premiums. The government signed the $5.5 billion agreement with Oban Energies back in February for the oil refinery and storage facility for East Grand Bahama. I think the main thing, the main thing is the is the economic benefit. Um, they are generally speaking very high paying jobs um, in, um, in this industry. Um, the employees at Stat Oil and also at um, Buckeye, they, they are paid. Um, above average salaries than, than the normal industry. So there's over, over 300 um, um, grand Bahamians who will be employed there. And then you, you have the spin-off in the economy. And um, so it is, it is very good news for Grand Bahama from an economic point of view. Residents on Grand Bahama are still hoping for an economic turnaround. The leader of the Grand Bahama Christian Council says that maybe now is the time for the government to consider a major change that can possibly bring the island back to its glory days. Italia Hall has the details. President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Rev. Dr. Robert Lockhart, is encouraging Grand Bahamians to continue to pray to God to move the island forward. He says he believes that it is time for the government to now consider the model by which Grand Bahama has been operating by for many years. We've been running with a set model, a set structure, way of operating for the last 40, 50 years, and I believe it's quite possible that that which used to work for us is now working against us. The president says Grand Bahama has not been able to recover from its economic woes and it is time for a change. I think we need to begin to look at the foundation of how we operate as an island, how we operate as, as an area that we call Freeport and see if it is time for us to consider some changes. I do agree somewhat with the former prime minister that it may be time for the government to seriously consider um, purchasing Freeport. Former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram, noted recently that the ownership of the port by the government with other partners, including Bahamian investors, could restore Grand Bahama. Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart says overall, he does not think that decision would be a bad idea. We need to seriously consider if that's still viable for the future or if that's had its time. The developers have accomplished the purpose that we wanted it to accomplish, which was to bring development, advancement, build a modern city. And so now that has been achieved. And maybe we've come to the place that that's been achieved in Freeport. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News.
Now, the Grand Bahama Port Authority releasing a statement just moments ago stating that in reference to recent statements released by the former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram, we disagree with the suggestion that today's government should purchase the Grand Bahama Port Authority instead of the Grand Lucayan Hotel. We remain focused on working together with the Bahamas government, the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce, and the Grand Bahama Port Authority to improve the quality of life for the residents of Grand Bahama Island and by extension, our nation. Now the statement concludes that the Grand Bahama Port Authority recognizes the island's challenges due to the lack of critical mass, which negatively impacts the small business sector. And they've hence put forth recommendations in conjunction with other stakeholders to introduce a proactive immigration policy that would attract highly skilled individuals needed to help grow and diversify our economy, resulting in an increased population. In other news, patrons of web shops do not have to face any new taxes until next month. As the government implemented 5% stamp duty tax on web shop deposits that was set to take effect yesterday has been pushed back. Gaming Minister The Honorable Dionisio Diagler said that gaming houses were not ready and needed more time to get their affairs in order. Financial Secretary and Secretary of the Gaming Board met with them and they came up with a new date of September 1st for the tax to take effect. In other news, schools across the country are preparing to open their doors in just a matter of weeks. And tonight, health and structural concerns top the priority list for the Bahamas Union of Teachers. Area Vice President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quinton LaRota, says that there are two schools on Grand Bahama that have been of concern for some time. Parents, teachers, and even students of the 8 Mile Rock High School have been advocating for years now to have that school building shut down and relocated. LaRota says that he believes now is the time. We felt that that would have ameliorated um, those consistent concerns every year. Governments, uh, both PLP and FNM, have spent a tremendous amount of money at, um, repairing or cleaning for mold and all of these things. And so we just want a break from that. And so we see that the new school is well on its way. Um, I know that there is a plan in place to have the new school be a junior school only, but um, there is a, a growing number of teachers, uh, myself included, who think it's probably a bad idea to move the entire uh, population. There's 500 kids there. Uh, a junior school typically won't be built with, um, with, with, with the workshops. So perhaps if you put some workshops on the new site, that could accommodate everybody. Bartlett Hill Primary School is also a concern following the major damage that school suffered during Hurricane Matthew. LaRota says that teachers and students are occupying the building, although it was never completely repaired. And he says they are still experiencing issues. The teachers are, you know, they, they are a committed people and they are mindful that they are a part of helping the community get back to a sense of normalcy. And so after some time in the church, they moved back uh, in Bathed Hill. But there's been some concerns expressed by the school board in particular, and, and my shop stood there, that there are continuing structural um, situations and leaks and so forth and concerns. You know, where there's leak, they become mold and create a health hazard. Um, on the mold, the, the Bahamas is challenged with mold. And um, for the architects and the engineers, Ministry of Works people, when we build these buildings, we have to keep that in mind. LaRota says that health and safety will always be a top priority for the union. No matter what happens though, the union is uh, committed to having the teachers work in an environment um, that's safe uh, and, and relatively um, healthy. I think the uh, principal down there has that, that same mindset and I believe that the, the powers that be in Nassau uh, as well. So we have to work and partner to ensure that, that our teachers and our students are in the best environment possible. Now, the Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, is expected on Grand Bahama tomorrow, August 15th, to tour schools in the Western District. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us, there's more news right after this.